Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed on the third day and be raised again. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, no such thing that ever will happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Then he said to his disciples, Who wish, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny his cross, deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can give one in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. You duped me, O oh Lord. You duped me. Yeah. You made this sound like it was going to be just all peaches and cream. That, boy, once, once I turn away from sin in my life and get rid of all the distractions and and the things that weigh you down, it's just going to be an easy slide. No. Well, it'll get better after two years of learning philosophy and Greek and and Latin. Maybe, maybe by then it'll get better. No. Well, maybe major seminary, you know, three, four years in there, freedom to study and, and, and learn. And from really brilliant minds who have no personal agendas or anything. They're all, they all want it because they're all in one place. They all ought to think the same. And we should be just having a good time the whole way. No. Well, maybe after everything's said and done and sending it to the psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever, for the third time to try and figure out what must be manifestly wrong with you, meaning me, because... You gave up everything like it says in scripture and all women, folk and such like, and then come and follow me. And then it's just going to be greeted with open arms and, and just utter love and respect and admiration. No. Well, surely your brother's in the struggle. I mean, they tell you that your brothers are some kind of fraternity Right, that's unique and special, and you know, priests are only so much of the world's population, and so needed, and rah, 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 rah. And your brothers just love you. No. Well, maybe you get to the first parish assignment, and everything's just going to be great from there on out, because you now you're a priest, you're a priest forever, and you get to just act independently and and be in service to others, and just great. No. You duped me, O oh Lord. You duped me. But I willingly accepted it. And that's wherein lies the difference between those who truly take on Christ, want to do, and continue to do what is right, always and everywhere. That only comes from having a personal relationship with Almighty God. Doesn't come out of a book. 
doesn't come from an office that you have in the church, doesn't come from a title, doesn't come from where your investments are made, doesn't get any better if you have a new car or an old car. The only thing that exists is that personal relationship with Almighty God. And I've been there talking about God to people I love dearly. And they looked at me like I was nuts. But the passion literally burned in my heart. I wish it would return like that. It burned within me. In the most positive, quenching fire you can imagine. Dominated my every thought. Made my actions what they should be. But it, it makes you a point of derision, right? In the scriptures it says it, you, that you're going to be somebody who's going to be a stumbling block for others. Because you're going to stand for the truth no matter what. You know, you can't ever make your political statement right by trying to ruin a beautiful work of art. It's unholy. And whatever you're saying is untrue. And you can't chain yourself to a trailer and put it in the middle of a road and stop people out in the desert to try and make a point about climate. What the hell do you know about climate? You're sitting out there grossly overweight, obviously don't take care of yourself, but you've got an opinion. Well, everybody has one, folks. Everyone has one. And you know what that opinion produces in most cases? What you get rid of in the toilet in the morning. And I say sometimes, but mostly keep it to myself, when somebody's jabbering on about an opinion that's just not worth the breath it spoke with, but i like, does your breath smell as bad coming out of your mouth to your nose as it does to mine? And it's not about dental care. It's about the opinion that's coming out of your mouth. Wise up. There's not a better plan. The plan's already there. And God set it forth for us to follow. I mean, any human person, they don't even have to believe in God. If they follow the Ten Commandments, they're going to have the kind of life that God wants for them. My brothers and sisters, you can't be forced. And God won't force you. But stop your griping. Stop following what other people say to do. And start following what God tells us to do. And do it every day. And then, if everybody wants to look at you like they looked at Noah. What an idiot building an ark. Well, guess where their opinions ended up? In the swirly downspout of the going off of the world's flood waters. And every every culture has a flood story in it. Okay? But we don't want to get burnt out to find out. That rhymes. That's kind of cool. We don't need to get burnt out to find out that God is the author and creator of everything. If you got to get off of one opinion, here's the opinion. There's never a time, place, circumstance where an innocent life should be taken. Period. Doesn't matter the number of weeks. Doesn't matter whether you're blind, deaf, dumb, retarded. I know we don't want to use any of these words anymore because what? It makes us feel better? No. It's a hard decision. A decision that women ultimately make, but men are Right involved in it all the way along. Right? But it's a decision we all have to make. If we don't put life first, we got nothing. Nothing. So thank God on Labor Day for our mothers who went through labor with us. Let's keep that before us. Whether it was long or short or a C-section or Whatever, an epidural block. The same. It, 
it, it's an ordeal from what I'm told. I wouldn't know. And most of you don't either. So every woman who hasn't had a child, shut up. You don't know any more about it than I do. But I know that my mama brought me into the world. And I better be grateful for the life that she and my father with God created. Even if I turn out to be a nutball saying what I'm saying to you right now. I say it because it's in my heart. You see a script in front of me? See me quoting somebody else? But if you want to put me to the test, be aware that I am fully armed. I'm fully armed and ready to make an argument, a true statement about what I believe. If that causes you to struggle, well, maybe that's a good thing. If it causes you to be built up, great. If it causes you to think about your mama on Labor Day weekend, even if she wasn't perfect, she was vital to you having an opinion about it. God loves you. Without, without our meaning or anything we do, he loves us. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to have a barbecue. He wants you to have bratwurst from Wisconsin, the only people who know how to make them right. They've even forgotten in Germany. But a bratwurst and a cold American brewed beverage surrounded by loving friends and family and maybe a floaty or a noodle or if you're lucky, a bigger boat. But for our family, in my time, it was called a sprinkler. Break out the sprinkler. Have a barbecue. Love life. And love on the ones that are around you to love on because sooner than you think, they'll be gone. but we all have a place together one day. Please, God, and please your decisions in life. Be good to yourself. Be more gentle to yourself and loving. And do that unto others. And indeed, our world will come back to the order that God originally intended. May Almighty God bless you and all your family members in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.